The deep sea is the largest habitat on the planet, taking up to 95% of the Earth's living space. Yet, it's also the most unexplored environment, despite being one of the most amazing places on the planet. Throughout the 10 facts of this video, you'll learn lots of amazing new things about the deep sea. Amazing! Number 10. Nobody knows where it begins. The deep sea is a contested term, lacking a single exact definition. For some, it refers to any part of the ocean where scary, odd, and downright bizarre creatures live. For others, it's a descriptive definition of specific ocean depths. Some claim it to begin at the edge of the continental shelf, where sunlight typically starts to fade, a depth of usually around 200 meters. Others, such as the World Register of Deep Sea Species, instead regards it as any point at which seasonal variations in physical parameters such as temperature becomes minimal. This means that the deep sea is usually anywhere below 500 meters. However, as the average ocean depth is around 4,000 meters, others would argue that the deepest depths are below 1,000 fathoms or 1,828 meters. You can see from this diagram that at this depth, as temperatures come close to freezing and little or no sunlight is present for photosynthesis, very few creatures are able to exist. Using light, pressure and thermal interfaces, oceanographers have divided the ocean into five distinct layers, which can vary depending on the area and clarity of the water, as each zone is distinguished by their unique characteristics. Number 9. Deep sea creatures are purposefully incredibly diverse. Species from the deep may look like they've evolved in strange ways just to freak us out, but in fact they've evolved that way for specific survival purposes. For instance, to take advantage of the lack of light, most animals are transparent or red, a colour which few creatures can detect and is camouflaging in the darkness. For those in the shallow deep sea, enormous eyes take advantage of what sunlight exists, and bioluminescence, a chemical reaction that allows animals to create light, is thought to be a way of counter-illuminating faint sunlight from above, so that fish are invisible to predators below them. Given the amount of water above them, pressure is another element creatures from the deep must deal with. It's enough to destroy distort the complex molecules, membranes and proteins upon which all life depends, which is why the deepest sea creatures are often gelatinous with very minimal bone structures. Again, to survive in the cold waters which can go below zero due to the salt in the water, many creatures carry highly unsaturated fats in their cell walls which help them to maintain the membrane fluidity in freezing cool depths of the ocean. Number 8. Exploring the deep is tremendously testing. An obvious fact, but one you probably haven't seriously thought about. Part of the reason why it's taken us so long to explore is because only recently have we created new generations of incredibly sophisticated underwater vehicles that are able to venture so deep. Some of the many submersibles we've created are still often defeated by the water's crippling pressure, as even the most advanced research vehicle in operation in 2014 imploded whilst in operation. At the time it was crushed under 10,000 meters of water, scientists estimated that there was about 16,000 pounds per square inch of pressure on the craft. To prevent crafts from imploding, submersibles must be internally pressurized to equal the pressure exerted from the outside. So it's fair to say that these machines are pretty amazingly engineered. Not only must deep sea researchers battle with some of the toughest elements, they must cope with the issue of being seriously underfunded. Space exploration dollars seriously dwarf ocean spending, as seen by this graphic from US fiscal spending in 2013. Number 7. Only three people have ever been to the deep sea. Due to the previously mentioned extremities, the deep sea may be the final frontier of exploration. Many more people have been into space than to the deep sea. Like seriously, a load more. Over 500 people have been into space, whereas only three people have ever ventured over 1,000 fathoms into the depths of our oceans. The first two people to venture this deep really outdid themselves and descended to the bottom of the deepest known part of the Earth's seabed in 1960. They descended into what's known as the Challenger's Deep, which is a relatively small slot-shaped depression in the Pacific Ocean that resides in the already unusually deep Mariana Trench. The third person 
to venture into the deep sea went there in 2012 and first showed enthusiasm for the deep by directing and producing movies including The Abyss and Titanic. James Cameron, unsatisfied with the lack of deep sea exploration, spent a reported $10 million to fund the construction of his deep sea challenger vessel. He descended to over 11 kilometers where he spent three hours collecting scientific data, specimens and visions unthinkable in 1960. Number 6. New species are being discovered daily. Since it's largely unexplored, each time a vehicle is sent into the deep, it's highly likely to unearth a new discovery. Over a recent year-long period, the World Register of Marine Species reported discovering 1,451 new marine species, of which many were found to be from the deep sea. That means on top of the 240,000 marine species already recorded, roughly four new species are found daily, which is astonishing considering that over a decade ago, many scientists assumed this to be the upper limit. Revised estimates based on the current rate of discovery suggest that we only currently know about a quarter of ocean species in existence, although many scientists think we know even less than this. Considering that most of those are species of the deep, of which the World Register of Deep Sea Creatures has only recorded 20,000 so far, there are many more crazy species we're yet to find. Number 5. It's a giant's playground. The term deep sea giganticism exists in zoology for a reason. It refers to the tendency for deep sea dwelling animals to be larger in size than their shallow water relatives. We're not sure whether it comes about as a result of adaptation for scarcer resources, greater pressure or for other reasons. However, in the case of marine crustaceans, it's been proposed that trends involve increasing size and age with decreasing environmental temperature. Here are a few examples of this phenomenon. The giant isopod, the giant amphipod, the Japanese spider crab, and the giant squid. Just imagine what other giants lurk in the depths. It's a scary thought when you consider how little we have explored of the deep sea. Number four, some amazing ecosystems exist on the ocean floor. In 1977, a deep sea research expedition made history as they found hydrothermal vents releasing mineral rich water at the bottom of the ocean. This discovery changed our understanding of the world as we know it because up to that point we'd thought that all life depended on sunlight for photosynthesis to survive. But these vents showed us that we have so much more to learn. Today they continue to be found in areas of known volcanic activity across the ocean where water is heated by hot magma through vents that crack deep into the Earth's layers. These vents make an entirely new ecosystem possible, one thriving with giant tube worms over a foot long, as well as many other life forms. The organisms are often clustered around structures emitting plumes of superheated water packed with chemicals. Though toxic to humans, the chemicals provide nutrients that certain bacteria can convert to energy, much like plants convert sunlight during photosynthesis. This process of converting chemicals into energy is known as chemosynthesis synthesis and redefine science as we know it. Number 3. Geothermal vents aren't the only thriving ecosystems on the ocean floor. Lush deep water coral gardens of various sizes, colours and shapes are able to survive in the icy cold and extremely dim waters of up to 6,000 metres below the ocean's surface. In fact, scientists have discovered nearly as many species of deep sea corals as shallow water species. Unlike shallow water corals, deep sea corals don't need sunlight but rather obtain energy and nutrients they need to survive by trapping tiny organisms in passing currents. Within the last 20 years, scientists, aided by technological advances, have uncovered one surprise after another about deep sea corals and so far over 3,300 species of deep sea corals have been identified, though the numbers keep climbing. They're incredibly diverse and also amazingly old, with some, such as black corals, estimated to be between 4,000 to 8,500 years old or more, making them the oldest continuously living marine organisms on record. On top of that, some grow into beautiful structures that rise up to 35 meters high. These corals, along with other habitat forming organisms such as ocean sponges, provide protection from currents and predators, acting as nurseries for young fish and feeding, breeding and spawning areas for hundreds of thousands of species. Number two, the deep sea may solve many of our problems. 
Such organisms that live in the deep sea coral habitats and the deep sea in general produce chemicals with enormous potential for future medicinal or commercial products such as pharmaceuticals, enzymes, pesticides or cosmetics. For example, scientists recently discovered that some sponges growing in deep sea coral ecosystems essentially produce antibiotics because they have compounds with anti-inflammatory and antiviral properties. Even more astonishingly, a compound from one deep sea sponge even produces a chemical that prevents cancer cells from dividing and spreading. Along with anti-cancer agents, some coral species contain pain-killing compounds and even sea fans contain high concentrations of prostaglandins which is a compound used to treat asthma and heart disease. Who knows what other potential life-saving compounds lie within coral reefs deep below the ocean surface. Number 1. The sea floor is a barren land. Put all your thoughts of geothermal vents and deep sea coral reefs aside, because the vast majority of the sea floor is featureless mud. On the face of it, it's pretty similar to the empty expanses of outer space, but in space you can see everything using telescopes. Here in the deep oceans, visibility is less than 100 feet and travel speed is extremely slow. This is a pretty normal view of the ocean floor from a subsea robot. The most interesting thing about this environment is definitely the creatures we're yet to discover. But, do you think we'll find more exotic alien life forms in the deep sea than up in space? Thanks for watching and subscribe to Be Amazed.